Hello, Anna. Uh, Nicole. Good morning or good afternoon. Hello, hello. We're just going to wait for us to join. Well, from what I know, Taylor is traveling, so I don't know if he's going to join. Oh, that's um, right. He, he said something about like a, the, a conference, right? Or, or Big 5G or something? Yeah, okay. Big 5G event. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Hi, Oliver. Hi, Victor. How are you? Good, good. All my windows were on top of each other. I was trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to locate myself here. Sorry. No, no worries. Like <clears throat> the first hour of the day. <laughs> yeah, well, you're a little earlier. Yeah, you're earlier. I I I should be better. I should, I've had a couple of cups of coffee already, but I'm still. It's it's probably more Monday, um, low Monday reactions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. I couldn't attend the, the last meeting uh, because I was attending the, the open source uh, summit. So probably I will have a little bit disconnect what happened last week, but yeah, I'm just okay. looking for the meeting notes here just to kind of jog my memory as well. Um, okay. I can stick it in there for anyone just to quick access. I know it's in the it's in the meeting invitation, but it just hmm. make it handy for everyone. Um, yeah, what do we talk about? CSPs for the, the KubeCon. Okay. CFP for KubeCon, yeah. Do we want to submit a CFP proposal for CNF working group? Um, what did he say there? Hmm. Well, actually, I can start sharing. Like, uh, I, I was thinking to wait a little bit more, but yeah, probably. I don't know if more people are going to join to the meeting. Yeah. I can actually, and I, I, I mean, I guess I guess we want to add. Uh, I can add something to the agenda. Um, please, uh, I'll add it here in a second. And just give me a second. Okay. I just added an item there. I just I can, if we want to talk about that. Uh, we can do that. Okay, or it is um, six after the hour, and apparently also Tom can also join. So, okay. I, I guess that we can start. Um, 
So, well, apparently uh, Taylor and others are attending the, the 5G event. So hopefully they can share something after the event. So, um, the next thing is like, I don't know if you have plans to, to submit some papers for, for the LFN um, developer testing forum. This is a virtual event, so basically um, it's a great opportunity to share um, ideas or best practices in this case. Um, do you have plans to submit something? Is that is, to, is that to me or to just everyone? I think for everyone, like uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, when's that close? Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's very soon. Um, Yeah, actually, if, if someone wants to submit it something, um, yeah, we can maybe um, submit together or like. A... Yeah, I mean, I would be interested um, if, you know, Victor, if you were interested, I, I mean, I if you want to set like, I would be happy to just, you know, maybe shut up a short call and just discuss it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm working in, in LFN in the um, in the Anakit Assured program, and we've had long had conversations about you know, CNFs, you know, there's sort of, people, there's work going on in sort of CNFs over on this in the CNCF, and there's a, there is, of course, um, infrastructure that should support CNFs, and there's some requirements for those within LFN. Um, I've been working in the past with Taylor, of course, trying to get, you know, strengthen the collaboration between both organizations in, so that there's a less fragmentation, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I, I, I don't have the answer. <laughs> I think there's some things I'm thinking, and I'd be happy to maybe discuss it a little bit more. Um, maybe not on this call here, but you know, if you, if you're interested, I could I can reach out to you, and maybe we can have a first pass, and then see if there's anything that we might want to bring up to the to the group. No, that's awesome. Um, actually, very interesting, um, and and also, uh, well, you have been also in the a few discussions. Yeah, so you're also aware, like, uh, that now we are like considering, like. I don't know if that is the, the first or the third pillar of the provisioning, like um, to consider like not only the, the workloads, also deploying through Nephew, like the, the whole infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess if we can, I, I think that we can combine all these areas, like a, as you said, like to unify and try to make all these things like align. So yeah, but yeah, definitely yeah, quite interesting to do that. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I have, uh, you know, that I'll just throw it out as another example. I mean, that, you know, we, for those, for those of you aware with Silva, you know, it's a, I believe that there are plans at some point to offer, you know, to do CNF sort of uh, validations there and using the test suite uh, from CNCF. And I, you know, I, it, it's great. I just, my, my concern is always about these slightly variation, variations in different views and, and sort of how do we, I, I use the term align where we can and only diverge where you have to, um, because otherwise it's just, you know, creates so many different views of what it, what are the best practices at, you know, specifically for CNFs. Uh, mm -hmm. It can get, you get different, you get different answers if you go to different places. And I think that's a, that is of course a little bit of a challenge. So the more we can do to collaborate, I think is the, is my main, the main thing that I would be interested in trying to form some kind of, session around you know how do you how do you how do you bring those closer into alignment while still allowing the flexibility to have different opinions you know have an opinionated view in different places uh, if you look at lfn for example within anakit i mean we've managed with some of the work we've been doing to align on um the first sort of essential and i'm i know i'm mixing between the cnf test suite and the working group here but I think some of the work we do here does trans uh, translate into tests um, in the test suite. And there today exists, I think it's around 15 essential tests. We've managed on Anakit to align on, on 14 out of the 15, which I think is actually, you know, that's very encouraging. Um, and that, that that's, those, those are the small steps I think we can do to help, you know, to contribute if we have new ideas to bring them back and sort of say, are these applicable for everyone or are they really an opinionated view that 
it should be only in one place. I don't know if that makes sense. If it doesn't, sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's still Monday. No, that's fine. I mean, I, I'm so trying to understand, like, your idea is to more like an open discussion or like a call for action or... Uh... Yeah, maybe something like a, a call for action. Yeah. An open discussion. Uh, yeah, let, let's, let me do this, Victor. I can, I'll reach out to you and I'll see if we can maybe just set aside 30 minutes and just discuss some ideas and see if we can come up with something that would make sense. Because I don't have a clear view on it right now and I, I can probably share more why uh, if we meet. Okay. I think Nikolai wants to say something or... Yeah. Uh, no, 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 I'm fine, you know. Okay, no, no worries. Also, Taylor is here. Ah, Anand? Uh, no, uh, hi. <clears throat> Thank you, hi. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if it's already discussed. Uh, I, I would also like to have a discussion on between horizontal cloud and vertical cloud these vendors bringing their own cloud solutions versus building one big cloud where all these CNFs can be onboarded as different tenants. Not sure if it's already discussed in this working group. Um, I mean, yeah, this is a, I mean, I guess it's related with CNFs and I guess it's a valid topic to discuss here as well. So yeah, I don't know, like, <laughs> um, do you want to discuss right now, like uh, as part of the, the agenda items, or like what is your? If if there is interest, yeah, I would, would love to. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, I I don't have too. We don't have too much items in the agenda, so let's put it like this here in the agenda, and, and maybe what do you think? Like, can okay. I mean the the, the rest. Let's leave the rest of the topics that we have is not too much. I don't think that are going to take us too much time. And definitely we can save some time for, for discussing this particular topic. Sure, yeah. All right. Um, so the next quite events is like the Open Round Summit. Uh, if I understand, this is a virtual event. So, and after that, we have the, the Open Source Summit. So, yeah, also, I guess, like, there's going to be a one, one regional summit as we, we had in, in Vancouver. And, yeah, the other two, two, two events are, like, uh, MWC and KubeCon. So, Taylor, do you mention something about like a KubeCon or like the, the Cloud Native Telco Day during, as a collocate event or like you, you don't have information yet? Um, still not confirmed. We're wanting to get sponsors for the event. Uh, gonna try to make it happen. We mm. have, I mean, it seems like it's been well received every time, so. I, th I think we need to keep doing it. And if we don't have, if we have a enough sponsorship, then we'll probably end up with potentially a full day. And if we get a half day only, then we'll probably do the community gathering like we did in KubeCon EU. Okay. Okay, nice to, nice to know. Uh, is the sponsorship prospectus, uh valid is this the new one or it's um i would just use it as a i don't i don't know that it's covers in a i'd have to look uh but okay. you could use it just kind of as a a Got general that. idea basis and we'll yeah. check in and get a new one okay all right um I think those are the all events that we have. Uh, so, if there is any anyone missing, uh, please feel free to to add it as part of the list. Given, no, uh, no, no. Um, so, uh, okay. Just a, a quick, uh, yeah, uh, to tell her you probably are connecting from a phone or something. Uh, I have opened the the, the prospectus. It's Yes, re relevant information for any for 
for the North, Amer North America. So yeah, it's it's okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that gives us uh, time. I don't know if we have PRs to review, like uh, or something, but I guess it's much better to start like checking the the items that we have here in the agenda. Um, so. Um, Anand, this is a, the, the topic that you want to discuss about this, or like? I, I think the, the topic I proposed comes under this, yes. But but mostly on the infrastructure side, yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously the, the, the point that you want to discuss is like um, having a, a CNF which is deployed among multiple um, data centers, like how can, what is the best practices to, to deploy that CNF, is, if I understand correctly, or like? Uh, no, mostly from an infrastructure perspective. I mean, I don't want to name any vendor, but say there is a vendor who is providing 5G solution, there is a vendor who is providing RAN. So they all have their own Kubernetes distribution, assuming mm -hmm. it's a cloud native network function, versus the operator having a unified cloud, let's say from OpenShift to VMware or Ranger. So this will create silos, right? I mean, as an operator, the, each of these products have its own lifecycle management. It will be difficult to manage again. So how is the industry addressing this? Let's say the same CNF can be, might be certified on both OpenShift and VMware. So instead of having their own cloud solution from each of the vendors, isn't it possible to, or consider it as a good practice to have one unified cloud where all these CNS can be onboarded instead of having so many de different deployments or different versions? Okay. Um, I guess that reminds me a little bit the the topic which was discussed during the, the gathering event. Um, so we're like, um, his name, uh, it was presented that where um let, let's take it the case for for five five three five uh, for 5g deployments like where you have like a multiple cnfs and every single cnf is using different vendors which has different infrastructure requirements so i don't think that i don't know like maybe i'm lacking lacking of knowledge but i guess like um I just assuming that mostly like the industry has been using a single infrastructure vendor. Maybe I, I could be wrong, like someone who has better expertise on that can can chime here. Um so, so so I think it's like we haven't that's that's why we have like a lot of initiatives, especially Oran, like where we are trying to disaggregate these and, and establish certain open standards and interfaces where like components can interact. Um, what I can explain maybe in terms of like a, an, in, in from nephew perspective, because it's the, the last thing that I have been involved. So we are trying to define the infrastructure as a, as part of the the, the 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 CNF requirement, so so when you express your desire, like what, what is your your five G uh, deployment desire, so you consider like the infrastructure as part of the requirements. So eventually, in this case, Nephew is going to take the decisions and is going to try to um, make the deployments. Uh, one of the the key um, tools that we are considering for for that particular exercise is cluster API. So the idea is to uh, consider as part of the package, uh, certain custom resources of cluster API and deploy the, the application, try to um, solve in the, 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 the requirements of the, 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 the CNF in this particular case. It is, okay. it, is, it is something that we're like still experimenting and, and we'll, 
certain things and we haven't reached that point. Obviously, this is very um, new and, and haven't explored yet, but I don't know, like someone has um, another experiences or like uh, ways that the industry has been um, mitigating this particular case. If, if, if I understood what you just said, so as long as the Kubernetes cluster can be orchestrated using cluster API, so it, it hardly matters if the, the Kubernetes distributions are from different vendors, as long as it meets the requirements. <clears throat> is, is, is that what you? Yes. Like yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. So so basically, cluster API has different providers. So um, and and in that way, you can express those requirements. Uh, yeah. based, based on the application. But yeah, I mean, it, now we have like a, I mean, a cluster API has been there for a while. So yeah. the, now what the major difference that we are trying to do is like, we are trying to integrate like that particular tool with the nephew ecosystem. So in that okay. way we can express the the 5G the deployment, like as a, as a, as a new, I want to like um, Kubernetes resource, like where you express your, your intent. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but for now, I mean, we're working on that and, and it is showing like a good results. The, the only problem that we have is like right now, Cluster API only focus on deploying Kubernetes, um, Kubernetes yeah. clusters. So, and, and there are some cases where we need to interconnect those clusters, like, so, for now, I don't know if we have like a, a a tool which can help us to interconnect those clusters using the same uh, model that, that we use, like a what is the name, CARIEM, given uh, this resource model. So okay. it's, it's something that probably we have to face it in next coming releases. Okay, I think I think Nephew would try to address the current challenges because I heard from different operators that we have one from Ericsson, the one from Nokia, mm -hmm. and they also have their own based on OpenShift, and it's really hard to convince, let's say, Ericsson or other players to move from their own Kubernetes distribution to uh, OpenShift. They'll come up with so many, and, um, you know saying that it, it's not good for, that's not tested, all these things they would come up with. So hopefully with Nephew and with standardized cluster API, I mean, with, with cluster API, it, it, it can be addressed. Yeah, exactly. And also now like a Kubernetes has this LTS concept. So not only, not only you depends of the, the, the cluster vendor, like you also depends of the cycles that they have. So. If for some reason uh, they don't want to move forward, or they haven't applied all the patches because they are like Kubernetes distribution. So you have to heavily depend on them, like uh, on their own cycles. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a good point, like definitely for sure. Uh, one more question, if if you're okay. Sure. Yeah. On on Nephew. So so we have Nephew. We have. VNFM from vendors. So is Nephew trying to get into the VNFM space, you know, direct, directly orchestrating the CNFs instead of letting the, the SVNFM orchestrate the components? I'm, I'm not really really sure because I've read that there, at some stage there is uh, Nephew is slightly overlapping with domain orchestrator or, or VNFM. Um, I think, if I have to um, define nephew in few words, I could say like a nephew is um, so it's like a, the tool which is bringing the the GitOps best practices or like mm -hmm. uh, for for CNFs. So I mean, uh, obviously, I'm trying to could a lot of them. so so in that way like uh it's it's not pretending to be like a replacement like or like probably it's trying to connect a lot of the things that they are there like i mean and there are people who are like connecting with on um so with other other existing ecosystem uh, in the open source ecosystem so yeah but uh obviously uh the way that for example in on app 
was managing the, the, the life cycle of the, the BNFs was like a very, um, can be a manual thing. So it needs like a lot of interaction between different operators. In these cases, the, the, the interaction is more like a GitHub, using GitOps best practices, like, uh, and, okay. and using the Git, GitHub or GitHub or any Git server as a source of true. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, sure, got it. There, there are some parts that they're looking at orchestrating deployment of Kubernetes. It's at least in the the future part of Nefeo. They're focusing on onboarding and management of the CNF lifecycle, including any type of capabilities needed for the networking and anything. Um, that may require the CNF and um, attributes and needs in the cluster. So that could be expanding a cluster with certain things. And that's where they're looking at operators and other parts that may do it more administrative things on the cluster than just uh, deploying a CNF. And as they're getting into that, they're at least writing up things in the documentation for potential future management around orchestration of clusters and multiple clusters. I don't know if, if that'll ever come to be something that they focus on, but it's, it's definitely talked about in some of the calls and it's in the documentation. But management of the environment and and stuff is is part of it. The CNF onboarding would be the the main thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's true. Like also, well, nephew, um, in 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 two weeks, I guess we're going to have the first release. So that is a long, a long things to do, a lot of a lot of things to implement in that particular project. So also move a lot of moving parts. So it's promising a lot of things. <laughs> so but yeah, it's a, it's also a good place where we can like uh, bring these kind of concerns and say like uh, well, what if our what is what about this case? Like, are we are addressing this particular this current issue? Like, are you addressing all these things? Okay. Um. Well, Taylor, I I couldn't attend the, the previous meeting, so I don't know if you have something, or I don't know if you discussed something from the previous meeting that you want to bring in this particular. Uh, nothing really from the previous ones. Uh, Nikolai, did you put forward any of the stuff around best practices that might apply to Kubernetes extensions and plugins like CNIs and other things yet? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. No. All right. So the, this would be some relation to thinking about like what is nefio covering and other projects that are dealing with when you're looking at GitOps, how to use the patterns and stuff with GitOps for doing deployments mm -hmm. you're going to start thinking of things that are not just deploy the application onto kubernetes um with without thinking about the platform. So there's some parts that end up thinking about what is what are you configuring on the platform and stuff like that. And then you start looking at things like extensions to Kubernetes and everything else. So um, there's 
Nikolai had brought up CNI um, plugins like Cilium, and there's other ones that I think would come in. How do we talk about projects like that and best practices that we think would be good for the community to adopt in general? So we can, and Victor, um, a few months ago, but we were talking about maybe highlighting best practices from NFIO. Mm -hmm. So that could be some areas, um, things related to maybe the, the boundary between RAN and, and then core, uh, uh, core components. And how do we, what, what would we think would be practices and uh, maybe technology to look at that are on those edges? Um, and even we could even think about like stuff on, on RAN because now there's more and more adoption of running Kubernetes on the edge and everything. Well, how are, how are you going to do it on radio? ORAN is digging into that. But I think that would be something to explore. A lot of the practices we've been focused on are more general um, practices that would be for any type of workload, not even specific to CNFs. So we could look at what are some specific needs of CNFs that aren't as common for other applications. And then how would we, what are some patterns and practices that we would recommend? If you're running in a Kubernetes environment, then how do you best take advantage of those? Yeah. And I think Nikolai, the stuff around uh, Cilium would be, you know, one of the areas that gets in a more important networking applications and networking environments, but that that might get into workloads taking advantage of those, and then what should they be expecting? Yep. Sure. And then if we're going to have projects like Cilium that are going to go through and say, hey, we're following best practices um, that community agrees on um, running in a Kubernetes environment, and what are those so that, you know, that they could be written up and maybe they become part of the CNF certification so that potentially profiles. So maybe we have workload application like profiles and then something that would cover projects like Cilium that would maybe wouldn't be considered workloads, but are an important part of the environment. And we want to um, have it where they can say, hey, we're following best practices. Okay. Well, an, another topic that I was thinking around, like um, maybe it's not related with a little more CNFs and all these things, is just about the how to manage the. I mean, a few years ago, we didn't have configuration tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, all of these things. So that's why those things were created, like a, because we have to manage all the uh, hosts. Uh, operation tasks so so it were those were great and 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 we have a great progress on them but now that assuming that most of the deployments are using kubernetes as a as a standard like the new uh, cloud operating operating system so i i, I just think about it like is it still is it still making sense to to do certain operations with Ansible and all of these configuration tools, or makes more sense to take advantage of Kubernetes 
uh, talking about for example you can if you need like a to to install like a, a kernel module for example um so there are ways to do it the same task using Ansible, or you can take advantage of Kubernetes and do the same operation. Same thing for installing um, things on the host. I know that definitely that somehow violates the the principle that we are saying, like not not trying to use privileged containers, but it's, it's possible to do it. So I don't know if you want to talk about this particular topic where could be the a good practice or bad practice to use Kubernetes as a as a configuration tool or keep using the same um the same tools like traditional tools like a uh, ansible what where do you think uh, maybe Taylor or, or someone if want to, to mention something about this topic? Um, I, I think folks can get too caught up on the technology and tools like Ansible and as an example, mm -hmm. um, versus the reason why you're using them and the patterns that I think can be applied with different tools so GitOps doesn't require flex cd for instance get the patterns behind GitOps are older than the term GitOps. Um, you you could see people using the same type of principles that you're seeing with those type of deployments and management for the configuration and all of that um, for a, a long time before, probably before Kubernetes, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I think those are more important to really understand um, than looking at the technology or tools or whatever it has to do with does does the tool let you follow the patterns and practices that you want to utilize that you think are going to be good? So, uh, I guess stepping back, what is the problem that you're going to solve? And then do these, does this technology help you or is it going to be harder? Because there's definitely some technology where you could say you can use it following any pattern, but it may uh, fight you or it may it may not be designed to follow those patterns so when we talk about kubernetes and cloud native kubernetes is an implementation of the principles and practices that existed before kubernetes but they're baked in so it means when you look at kubernetes as a framework and you want to follow cloud native practices, it's gonna just help you along. So when you're looking at configuration management, deployments, whatever else, well then, you know, Ansible would just be one tool and you can go, how does it follow those? So Ansible and, and many of similar ones can be, potentially simple enough and they allow you to have a domain it has a domain uh you can create your own domain language mm -hmm. where you could build ansible playbooks and stuff uh, using its terms to do things in a way that are following best practices and patterns that that you're wanting to follow so i'm not against using ansible and you can see some of these uh, configuration management tools starting to come back again. Um, they they seem to be pushed to the side by as some other tools are coming forward, and now they seem to be coming back and and maybe being better integrated. 
Yeah, also like, uh, I mean, yeah, definitely that's true, like uh, all, all things that you're saying. Um, but for example, like, uh, the, I think the name was the puppet agent. If, if you compare some of the functionality that this particular agent is doing in the the, the servers, it's quite similar like the, what Kubelet does in in the worker nodes. Like, a, I mean, it's, it's constantly checking if there is something new to do and once it receives instruction, applies the, um, the operation. And obviously more things to do, like a Kubelet in, this is connecting containers and doing a lot of stuff. Uh, and Puppet Agent definitely manage uh, files and install packages and things like that. But in, I, guess, I guess in a sense, the, the functionality that this particular, these two things are like doing is, is pretty much similar. It's sharing a lot of things. So yeah, so maybe the, the major difference is like the level of adoption that Kubernetes has. So So probably not, Probably a few years ago, there there were just few people using Kubernetes in their own deployments. But now that the the it must massive of the deployments are using Kubernetes, probably it's not the case. Like most of them has Kubernetes on it, so it's not a problem. Doesn't have that particular agent or behavior in the the server. But yeah, probably yeah. The, the, it's it's better to have like a choices and, and tools. I'm not saying that we don't have to stop using Ansible or any configuration tool. Of course, there is their own um, use cases. But I guess I don't know if we 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 should start like um, relying more in 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 having the fact that maybe we have Kubernetes as a deployment. And take advantage of, of those tools there and try to minimize um the the the, the corner cases um like uh i don't know like probably is this uh as you said it all depends of on the use case every single use case and it probably has uh, different scenarios All right. Um, we don't have any other topic in the agenda. Uh, I don't know if someone wants to bring something. I had. Um, I did actually have a, and I think it's. It feels like the timing is kind of good. Um, I have a. There's a discussion item there at the bottom, which I just had put into the agenda. Um, oh, you <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, Oliver. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Basically, what I I, I I shared this with uh, Taylor a week or so ago, just and I, I don't know if anyone else has if this is just me or if there's others who might think this could be a good idea. So this is really just a discussion item. Um, having participated here in the CNF working group um, and also the test suite for that matter. Um, one of the things, you know, I, I feel like I have a pretty good view on what we're, what our, what our goal is. Of course, identifying best practices. And I think I ran into, um, I was looking in our, our repo today, and I just I found a nice little reminder. Uh, if I would almost, in fact, I'll do this. I'll just take a picture and share it in the in the chat, so I don't have to screen share my screen. Um, but it 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 was a little bit along the topic of what we what you were just discussing now. Um, Partially, give me a second here. I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, I can give you access to share it like a... Okay, yeah, if, if I'll, I'll do that, that's fine. Um, bear with me for a second. All right, so... Yeah, so I just... I was just noting when you were talking, I think maybe there's some relevance to this as well. Um, this is from our... This is from our repo here. This is some documentation we have on sort of how we work with the com communities and also the scope, right? Um, and so I think I, I 
we were talking a little bit about infrastructure and we're talking about, you know, what this group is focusing on. How do I build CNFs? How do I run CNFs, deploy, manage, lifecycle? Uh, we've been talking a little bit about Nephio. And so the, what I wrote in the notes or in the agenda today was really just a question about would it make sense or would it be a value to this group to somehow try and build a view of what we, you know, we have categories and I'm just going to go to that for a second here. So um, bear with me. I think it's here too. Yeah. So we have these different categories um, where we are, we've been working with uh, identifying best, best practices. And I'm wondering if it would make sense to somehow try to summarize what are the areas where we feel that, you know, if we were to sort of put a, a judgment call on this area is fairly well understood. It's green. There are best practices, you know, they're, they're versus other areas that may be underdeveloped. In, in other words, just a tool to try to help us understand where are best practices needed. Because I think sometimes, for, at least for myself, it feels like we're looking for best practices. Uh, and, and I just like to have an organized way of seeing where are the challenging areas you know, and I think you were touching on it a little bit, Victor, about lifecycle management. There are new tools that are being, that mm -hmm. are coming. And I know that we're not necessarily looking at the tools, but we're looking at the patterns and the best practices. Um, so it's just a, a, just a thought. Uh, if someone would be interested, I think that would create some value to identify the, you know, what are the areas in terms of CNFs that are underdeveloped, needs more work, needs more best practices to address some issues. And that, I don't know if anyone else feels the same way. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. To be honest, I never think about it, but now that you <laughs> present this, um, so so what could be from from your opinion, like what could be the the best um, way to the, the criteria that we can use, like a, the number of best practices or the quality of the best practice, or yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I I I don't have the full view, but I think maybe starting with simply, I mean. Doesn't it's fairly simple to identify what we have and you know we we have categorized things already so i think just having a reflection on that and then um certainly maybe looking at uh, you know from a community uh, i think we need to sort of rely on ourselves to say so what are the areas where we feel you know there's only two but let's just use an example hypothetical this category only has two best practices yeah. is there a reason is it because we're not having each is there any challenges there or are there challenges um that remain and even if we don't have the best practice we can identify some of those challenges I, I just i can't help but think this might help us you know identify areas where we need to solicit you know and whether that's from csps or vendors you know trying to understand what are the challenges or, or that you're having how do we you know so that we can reflect on on, on possible best practices for that it's just an it's just an idea. Otherwise, it feels like it's. Does anyone have any best practices? You know, it's a, it's great, and I think we have identified them. Uh, we've identified some. Uh, I'm just trying to think from a more maybe structured approach to, you know, where where are the biggest challenges that remain, and maybe identify new new categories that we haven't really touched on. Um, <clears throat> I have some some kind of quick comment here. My, I mean, earlier earlier in this uh, in this call, uh, I don't remember who brought up the topic of uh, okay, but vendor X uh, is delivering their CNFs only certified against their own Kubernetes, and this clearly is a sign of not following any best practices, right? Because essentially this means that their distribution is fine tuned and their CNF is fine tuned for. You know, there's a much between the Kubernetes distribution with whatever uh, plugins and whatever it comes there and uh, the, 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 the CNF. So, I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't invest into the best practices. Uh, I just somehow feel that, um, I mean, the real world is not really following them. And then the question is, are we, I mean, is anyone practicing these practices? I guess that's that's the 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 the, the, the question. Uh, in reality, I would I would love to to have all of these you know being followed and so on and so forth. And we have examples of uh, CNS being certified, which obviously are following best practices. Right? I mean, you 
you cannot pass the certification. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is more like an observation, not 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 that it adds anything uh, to the discussion. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, 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 I well, I, from myself at least, I, I think I agree with what you're saying. Um, I, and I think may, in some ways, this was again back to, for at least in my thinking was that we, you know, it's, it's almost like a, you can see this as another way to think about what I was 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 kind of suggesting there or trying to discuss is almost a maturity maybe model, right? Some somehow trying to come to because if why aren't they following those those best practices then um and i'm sure there's many different reasons um yeah exactly i i agree is there is there any disconnect between like whoever has to implement them and what we what we think because i mean i haven't been to each and every discussion here but more or less no one understands what we mean when we say best practices and it's mm -hmm. somehow kind of I don't know ideal world where uh, you know you have stateless services and all, everything according to the theory, but that then in the end um, maybe in reality it's just not feasible. I don't know. I mean I don't know, but it's um, yeah uh, something that probably we have to to somehow try to 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 go and listen to real world vendors of the CNS side. Yeah, sorry. Ideally, we're solving someone's, we're helping to solve problems or pains when someone's saying, I'm having a hard time with this. Well, we're trying to help with that. So a lot of problems in the past, uh, well, relating to what is Kubernetes doing or what is cloud computing, one mm -hmm. of the main topics is interoperability between multiple clouds at the or start of this call we're talking about different vendor clouds and then how do you ensure that things are going to work between them um if someone's providing their own environment whatever so the the interoperability there is part of it um interoperability between the different applications or CNFs that are going to work together. And that's going to go at all different layers. I mean, we have it split in different ways, This these actors. And the interoperability, I think, can be applied at different layers, including the how to, the CNF infra operator. How do I run the infra, deploy and manage? And then you have well, my infra actually has extensions and stuff because the workloads. Well, then how are you doing it in different environments? Because most of the service providers are running multi-cloud, you know, maybe their own and then running somewhere else. So interoperability. But if we'll start with who's the actor having a problem, and then where are they having the problem? Then we could probably dig in there versus the, even like this section is just talking about right now, it's just CNF developers. There's a another document that's best practice for CNF developers. So this is only one actor. And then some CNF developers, they actually care about how to, run and operate it because they're the ones building it and they need to know how is it working so they actually start thinking of this so in some some ways they could be the actor is also a cnf operator and then how do i consume it okay well you may have cnf developers that are also thinking about that um and so these areas this this is kind of to split and think about the practices that may overlap, you may have a microservice that also needs to think, okay, what is the configuration lifecycle or upgradability of a microservice? Why don't we have these? Just an area to really think about 
the best practice, but the best practice may actually be in multiple areas. The more important thing is who is it applying to whenever you're talking with someone and they're saying, hey, I'm having a problem. And we're going to go, well, let's think about best practices that we know. Are any of the best practices that we know, do they apply? I think if we have a, a, a actor that's putting forward some pain or problem that they're having, it may be easier than just talking about what best practices have we written up or not written up. Yeah, so no, yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, and that's the categories is great. I mean, that's just, you know, it's categorization, but I think to your point, it comes back to, so what are the, I, I hate to use the word life cycle, but it's, it's everything from, I mean, as, as a, as a, if I start with just myself, I mean, as a representative of a CNF vendor, I mean, the challenges there, there, if we were to sit in a room and just start to say, so what are the challenges? Well, the challenges, someone already mentioned it. There's many different opinionated versions of Kubernetes. So every time we're going to show that we're actually, you know, can can be deployed there and 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 it works, you know, there's a lot of certification work that has to go on. Um, some of it's overlap and very similar. Some of it's different. Um, what about orchestration? So is the end customer looking to orchestrate the CNF using ONAP or using Nephio or using something else? That's up. Those are so there. I think my point is trying to understand what some of those categories in terms of the areas of a CNF that not as not only the CNF vendor who's creating it, they're creating it for the purpose of to be used by someone. Um, and so what are the what are the challenges of those different environments you're going into? And I'm, I guess what I was trying to think about it, what are those areas if we can sort of massage out some of those areas and try to understand where are the challenges? Um, because then you could start to look at what, you know, what best practices do we have? What do we not have? Um, uh, an effort to get a list of challenges would probably be a good place. Uh, I'm actually headed towards uh, the big 5G event today. So I'll try to listen and, and write some up. I think a lot of the stuff that I've been hearing are from the cons consumer side, um, the service providers themselves, and looking at how are they managing. So some of those are going to be overlapping down here. But writing up the challenges, if we can have wherever they are i'm not really worried at what layer just who's having a challenge if you're in a kubernetes environment what type of challenges are you having and if if you're a vendor and you're having challenges deploying or you're having a challenge just integrating and working with another vendor or running on kubernetes is problematic with some other hard requirement that you have somewhere else those are the what we need to write up all right we made it to the top of the hour thanks folks yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. See you.